Hey guys, Genesis Frenzy here, and I know all of you are patiently waiting for Season 2 of GFZ Reviews, as am I. But today we're not going to be reviewing a game, instead we're just going to be looking at a game. And as the title says, I've given up on life. Now I know what you're thinking, Genesis Frenzy gives up on life, does that mean you're reviewing a bad game? Is this a review? Why is Crash Bash the first episode? Crash Bash isn't a bad game. Well, okay. GFZ Gives Up on Life is not a review. It's basically a review light. I'm just giving my first impressions and thoughts on a game that I recently played. Now, sometimes it can be a game that I played for quite some time, or it can be one that I just played recently and I want to give my opinions on without doing a fully fledged review on it. So basically, GFZ Gives Up on Life is going to be a review without being a review. There's going to be no score or anything. I'm just going to give you my thoughts, and whatever they may be is what the video is going to be. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this new segment of mine. Oh yeah, and the reason, before any of you ask, why the segment is called Genesis Frenzy Gives Up on Life is because, well, I like the way it sounds, okay? So I'm sure we all know about the Crash Bandicoot series. It was one of the few games at the time that perfectly nailed the 3D platformer during an era where 3D games were new. It was innovative and a milestone in the industry, being one of the games that laid the foundation of all 3D games to come. And this game was made by a developer that nobody's ever heard of, Naughty Dog. Up to that point, they've only made two relatively unknown games, so they were pretty inexperienced, which makes Crash even more special. Actually, this whole situation reminds me of Goldeneye, with most of the development team being people who haven't even made a game before. But anyway, Crash was a huge success and spawned more games in the series like Crash 2, Crash 3, and Crash Team Racing. By this time, Crash was at the height of its popularity, and people couldn't wait for the next Crash Bandicoot game. Well, that is until Naughty Dog announced they would be leaving the series, and would go work on a new game for the PS2. That game we would come to know as Jack and Daxter. Now, Crash fans were a little scared and worried for the next game in the series, but not to fear, Eurocom, known for such games like... Oh. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Okay, their track record is pretty hit and miss, but maybe it'll be good. Uh, short answer, it actually is good. So, this new Crash game, Crash Bash, what is it exactly? Well, it's a party game. Can't really go much more in depth with it, due to the fact that I lack people to play with, but I can give you my thoughts. Quite bold for the first Crash game without Naughty Dog to be a spin-off, but hey, delay this as long as you want, I do not care. Crash Bash's story, if you can call it that, is Aku Aku and Uka Uka are arguing who is better. So they settle the argument with a tournament of games so their teams can compete or whatever. I don't even know. The story is so stupid that uh, I just do not care. So Crash Bash has three modes. Adventure, where you take on AI opponents in a few games, then fight a boss, yes, a boss in a party game, then move on to the next area with more challenging rivals and games. Then you have Battle Mode, which you and up to four friends, assuming you have the multi-tap, can compete or team up against each other on the game of your choice. And Tournaments, which is just a structured set of games. So the actual party games that you play are really fun. First we have Ballistics, which is Pong, 4-way Pong, but still Pong. Then we have Polar Push, where you ride on polar bears and try to knock each other off the stage. Pogo Pandemonium, where you jump on spaces to light up your color, and when you have enough spaces, you can bank your spaces for points. Crate Crush, where you run around the map and throw crates at opponents to lower their health, and the last man standing is the winner. Tank Wars, which is like combat on the Atari 2600, you're in a tank and try to take out your opponent in a grid-based map. Crash Dash, in which you race your opponents and avoid obstacles, simple as that. Then finally we have Medieval Mayhem, where you just try to pop more balloons than your rivals. Now that may seem like there's not a lot of content, but the replay value for these games are staggering. Trying to master it is a very hard thing to do, and with friends, well, it just gets even better. You even have different maps which changes the game just enough to add a whole new strategy to one of the base games. It's rather addicting, and they really all play well. 
The soundtrack is just fantastic. All the remix tracks are fantastic. All the original tracks are fantastic. It's just an all-around awesome soundtrack that fits this game perfectly, and to be honest, has some of the best music in the series. The graphics and art style for a game of this nature are great. They look just as good as the original Crash games, and since they don't have the low levels like the platforming games, the graphics are even more detailed than those games, for the most part. Overall, Crash Bash is still a really fun party game, and is one of the few Mario Party clones that are worth your time. Unlike this game! So I definitely recommend you go and pick this game up. Unfortunately, the only way to play this game is if you pick up an original physical copy of the game, as it has yet to be released on the PlayStation Network. Unless you live in Japan! It may take some time to find, but I definitely think it's worth it. So next time when I give up on life, we're gonna be all Christmassy and look at one of the first awesome games for the PS3, Uncharted Drake's Fortune. See you next time, Genesis Frenzy signing off. You have to be kidding.